I'm Mary Potterman Giles. This is a history of my great grandmother, Mary Jane Chase Finley, an early settler of the of Springville, Utah. And in fact, she wrote the history of a history of Springville from 1850 up to 1949. She was the daughter of Solomon D. and Lydia Ann Thorne Chase. She came to Springville when she was one year old and lived here ever since. She was born in January 27, 1857. She married Alman W. Finley December 23, 1876. Her parents were early settlers. They weren't quite ready to come across the plains when the first exodus came through. So they prepared and they were very well prepared. They came across in 1853 and they were very prepared, like I said, and they didn't have any trouble coming across. In fact, they enjoyed their trip across. They came with cousins and they enjoyed the trip very much. Uh, they didn't have any problems with Indians or anything. She didn't enjoy housework very much. She would much rather sew. And she made this dress that I had over here and she said she would rather sew than do housework. So she was a, became a very good seamstress and she took in sewing for many other people. And, in, and then she was able to have enough money to hire a girl to come and do a lot of her housework. So that was, she did a lot of things for other people on the sewing. When at the age, tender age of 17, she became uh, one of the first school teachers in Springville. And where, where she was was out by where the Jefferson School is now. And she had uh, some boys that were bigger than she was, and she was able, to, they were rowdy, and she was able to get to them, and they didn't know very much. They were very early in school, even though they were big boys, and she was able to teach them. And Her father, uh, Solomon Drake Chase, an early settler of Springville, in fact, was instrumental in doing the remodeling of the little white schoolhouse. And he did a lot of uh, woodworking in the city, in building and so forth. He also, for a long time, there wasn't a doctor in Springville, and he did have some doctoring skills, so he became a doctor and did a lot of doctoring in the city. And I tell you that because her, his daughter, Mary Jane, Chase Finley was very interested as a young child to go with him and learn some of the doctoring skills that he did. So as a young child but from then on she went with him and she learned a lot of the nursing things that he did as doctoring. And she became one of the well-known nurses in Springville. She didn't like to deliver babies as much as she liked just taking care of the sick. But there was one instance where she was called to deliver a baby in the middle of the night. And she, so she went and the baby, the mother was having trouble having the baby, but she got the baby to come out. And for some strange reason, the baby had a film over its head. And so she was able to get that film off the baby. If she had not been able to, the baby would have died. So she was quite became quite adept at figuring out things doctoring nursing wise. We are not here to play, to dream, to drift. There is hard work to do and hands to lift. Spurn not the struggle, face it, tis God's gift. That was her ideal in life. Face anything, any trial that came about, that you could get through it if you had a positive attitude. She said, I saw the first kerosene lamps and the first electric lights. Heard the first telegraph and first radios in the city. I have traveled on horseback and in carts, lumber wagons, fine carriages, the first steam trains in the territory, the electric cars, and the automobile. I have made starch, candles, and soap, learned to spin and weave. I can remember when I seldom saw a newspaper or magazine. But if one was available from any source, I read it from cover to cover, including the advertisements and the almanac. She was very gifted. I, re I was privileged to know her. Uh, many people don't know their grandparents, let alone their great-grandparents. 
and I was privileged to know her. She died in 1949, and I was 14 at the time. So I was old enough that I do remember her. Mary Jane Chase Finley was born in Cottonwood, Salt Lake County, Utah, January 27, 1857. She was the daughter of Solomon D. and Liddy Ann Thorne Chase. She came to Springville when she was one year old and lived here ever since. The first home that they lived in is still standing, but it's been remodeled so much that it doesn't resemble the first home at all. The, phone that, the home that she and her husband lived in and built and raised her family is down on 4th North and 1st East. And it's the home that uh, Hitchcock bought. And he tore it down and he put up a home on the same floor plan as her family home was. So the floor plan is exactly like the floor plan of the early days. The outside of it looks quite similar. There are pictures, I think, here, while well, it's in the book, of, of it, and the, it does look very similar to that. She was one of the first school teachers in Springville, a member of the Board of Education in the early days, past president of the early Republican Party and of the Springville chapter of the American Red Cross. I have to stop here and say she was the first judge of election, of the first female judge of election in the city. Before that, they only had men, and they didn't want her to do it. This is a man's thing. And she was quite a, a, an early women's rights advocate. And she said, if a man can do it, a woman can do it too. And her husband backed her up. So she was an election judge many, many times. But she was, the first time, like I said, they didn't want her to do it became the YWLMIA. She organized and was the first president of the Parent Teacher Association of Springville in 1914. She has served in various offices of the LDS Church, including Sunday School Teacher, Literary Teacher of the Relief Society for many years. She has operated and served on numerous committees from the improvement of Springville. Among her literary endeavors is an account of events in the settlement of Springville from 1850 to the present time. She was a member of the committee which was instrumental in having a monument of Cyrus S. Dallin placed on the city park to honor the pioneer women, mothers of this vicinity, and that state she was still there. She was also instrumental in having a bronze marker placed on the large cottonwood tree in front of the Third Ward LDS Chapel. That tree was a big tree. It isn't there anymore, but I remember it. It was a large tree, and it stood in front of the Third Ward LDS Church on North Main. And uh, it, the story goes that when Brigham Young was going, traveling south at all, that he would always stop and rest under that big tree. Well, the city fathers decided that the tree had a disease in it, and it had to come down. And the senior people in the city, the people, the, especially the women, the daughters of Utah pioneers and so forth, said, no, you are not taking that tree down. And they said, it has to come down, it's diseased. And the women decided that the day they were going to take it down, they all got together and they formed a circle around that tree. Uh, they didn't think the bulldozers would go through them, but as such, as course, when the city, when the bulldozers started, tor started towards them, it frightened them enough that they moved and they brought the tree down. And so they were very disappointed in that. They wanted it to be a marker for Springville. In 18... Uh, 46, when she was 89 years old, she was made queen of the 1847 Black Hawk celebration in Springville. And I have a picture of that. She was a mother of 11 children, eight of whom survived her.